So food is magic. It's a matter of joy. Computers are mechanical, boring, and dry. They seem like an unending stream of ones and zeros, so boring. Therefore, thinking of making food, which is a creative endeavor, computable, seems like a dehumanizing act. How unromantic. Think of yourself enjoying your favorite dish as a matrix of ones and zeros. That doesn't inspire much. So why is it that one is thinking of making food computable, and how does one go about doing it? I'm Ganesh Bagler, and I would like to present you my dream, my idea of making food computable. Food and cooking are creative endeavors. Cultures across the world have developed idiosyncratic practices for putting together raw ingredients, processing them, and creating delicious recipes. And these delicious recipes are cultural capsules that have been carried over for centuries, if not millennia, and have reached us. We take pride in them. We wonder whether the chicken tikka masala is that of Britain or India. Is the rasagulla, does it belong to uh, Assam or West Bengal? Therefore, we are very, uh, uh, we, we take pride and we enjoy our food that we, that we like, the culture that we belong to. Given that, it looks like no other species on the face of the earth prepares, processes food the way we do. And we are omnivores and have figured out ways of processing all sorts of raw ingredients to create dishes out of them. To an extent, it seems that our ability of cooking itself is the very essence of being human. So Homo sapiens have dominated the face of the earth thanks to their abstract thinking, technological prowess. And ironically, today, we stand in the middle of an epidemic of lifestyle disorders, obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disorders. And among other things, one of the major factors that is responsible for these lifestyle disorders is diet. So ironically, while food and diet make us what we are as a human being, seems like at the same time, they are also responsible for causing the issues that we are trying to resolve today. The Earth's population is ever growing. And within 30 years, we expect to have a population of 10 billion people. How are we going to sustainably feed these 10 billion people while handling the problem of hunger and mal malnutrition on one hand, and at the same time, the lifestyle disorders on the other hand? Can we learn from the culture and traditions that have been passed over over generations to us? Can we use technology in a manner that can help us transform food such that we will have a sustainable future and a food system that we can be proud of in decades to come? That's the question we are asking. Data is all pervading. And all of our aspects of uh, life have been invaded by data science. Whether it is navigation or weather prediction, it seems like we have found ways by which we can collect data, organize it, and use computational approaches for coming up with interesting applications, whether it is navigation apps or weather prediction apps. We have found ways of doing it. All of this would not have been possible had the data of geographical correlates had not been meticulously collected over time and organized in a fashion that we can use the computational algorithms for analyzing them. And in a similar manner, we would not have been able to have reliable short-term weather prediction in the absence of meticulous data collection of weather. Exactly in a similar manner, standing in 21st century in the middle of data revolution that we are facing, the question that I would like to ask is that, can we use data in a meaningful manner to collect, curate aspects of food such that we can come up with interesting applications making food sustainable? And towards this, computational gastronomy is a new niche a data science that has emerged with newer sources of gastronomical data that are becoming available and computational approaches for dealing with them, with which we can blend food with data science to be able to come up with interesting applications for food, understanding food in a far better manner. 
And when we think about food, it turns out that it has multiple aspects, cultural and social aspects. And at the same time, you have ecological aspects. And you have hedonic aspect in terms of what you like and don't like, nutritional and health consequences. Is it at all possible to capture all of these aspects in a meaningful manner through data without losing essential information to be able to come up with this computational gastronomy revolution, which can help us making food computable? That's a question I have been asking for the last eight years. And in IIIT Delhi, in my laboratory, the complex systems laboratory, we have been trying to gather these data, which have been not available. You can imagine that all of these aspects are pretty rich and diverse. And to be able to gather this data has taken a long time for us, which were not available earlier. Now imagine you are relishing your favorite dish. And the moment you take a bite of it, you will feel euphoria, nostalgia, and a sense of joy. Where does that come from? The dish itself that you are consuming has a history of centuries, if not a millennia. And therefore, the processes which have been used to create that dish itself is a part of information data for us. And at the same time, you have these olfactory and gustatory mechanisms, heavy terms which are used to talk about the odor and the taste that we sense when we consume a food. All of these have been ingrained within our biological machinery all the way down to the DNA. That information is also needed to be able to make any meaningful understanding of this food, not to mention the consequences, which is the nutrition and the health aspect of it. So over the years, we have been collecting this data and stand at a place we are the ground zero of computational gastronomy. RecipeDB is a database of recipes from across the world cultures, more than 100,000 recipes meticulously collected in a single place along with all its essential information, such as ingredient composition, nutritional profile, flavor molecules, etc. And FlavorDB is another extensive repository which gives us the molecular basis of the flavor. When you eat a tomato or onion, the kind of sensation that you end up getting is by virtue of the flavor molecules. And these needed to be gathered. And that is what FlavorDB represents as a repository. And further, we have databases such as DietRx, which compile information of food disease association for an array of ingredients that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. This information is empirical evidence available from scientific literature that has been mined. And this data is running into roughly a century. And on top of it, we are also gathering data of the carbon and water footprint of the ingredients and therefore the recipes that we consume. So now that's pretty much a rich information that we have been able to gather so far, not to say that there is much to be yet to be done. Having collected this data, now the fun begins. We can investigate and understand culinary practices from across the globe. We have been able to ask some of the most interesting questions, such as why do we combine the way ingredients are combined in our recipes? Are there patterns in them? Can we define the uniqueness identity of a cuisine in a data-centric manner? Can we find how cuisines are related to each other going beyond the intuitional level through a data-driven manner? Can we predict the taste of the molecule? Why do we eat spices? Can we come up with uh, dietary interventions with all these data analysis? So all of these questions and investigations into those have led us into a quantifiable understanding of cuisines recipes, and food in general. How many recipes are there, you think? If you were to compile all the recipes across the world, turns out that the number is humongously large. However, the number would not grow beyond a few millions, tens of millions, perhaps. But if you were to think about it, that a typical recipe has 10 ingredients, and there could be approximately 1,000 ingredients in basket that is available to you, in which case, the number of permutations and combinations that you can have is astronomically large. But then you might wonder, are these recipes all palatable or tasty for that matter? So that's a question we have been asking while looking at recipes. And in the process, obviously, we have ended up hitting a question that, can a computer think like a chef? Because culinary innovation comes by virtue of thinking of somebody like a chef who is experienced, 
has an intuition and has practiced for long hours before thinking of innovating and coming up with a new dish. Therefore, can we capture with all these data and algorithms the intuition of a chef into a program? We are talking about deep artificial intelligence, capturing human intuition and expertise through a program, and seems like a daunting task nonetheless. We've been working on this question, and while doing so, I believe that there is an underlying grammar for the act of cooking itself. And this is what I have worked on recently to come up with this idea of generative grammar of cooking. The culinary elements, the ingredients, their quantities, the forms in which they are used, the processing uh, uh, that is applied on the ingredients, the utensils, all combine with each other via rules, rules of culinary grammar, thereby creating ingredient phrases and instructions which finally give us recipes which we relish. So is it possible for us to root ourselves into these grammar and the rules as well as the data that is available to us to be able to come up with a computer-based chef. In this movie, Ratatouille, Chef Gustave keeps saying that anyone can cook. Of course, we are taking this idea a little too far by saying, can an inanimate object programmed computer, can it cook? And while doing so, we have used the techniques of natural language processing, named entity recognition, and text generation to come up with an algorithm called Ratatouille inspired by this movie, which can generate recipes on its own. You might wonder whether these recipes are at all palatable, and that's a valid question to ask, because it's easy to come up with all kinds of permutations which are rule-based and data-driven, but how well are they in terms of their taste? That's a question we should be asking. Turns out that we have reached a stage where, starting with scattered knowledge that was available to us, we have been able to build structured data repositories like RecipeDB, FlavorDB, and DietRx, and then invoke the power of computational creativity, may I say, by which we can generate new recipes rooted in this knowledge of taste, odor, culture, and other aspects that are pertinent when it comes to the recipes. Having done that, we are now implementing a Turing test for chef, a test which a chef will take by reading a recipe which is generated by a computer, and we shall be evaluating the ability of our algorithm in generating recipes that can fool a chef into thinking that they are real. And if we are able to pass this filter, then the next step will be, of course, cooking. Because the most obvious question that you might ask is that, Professor Bagler, all this is fine, but how many of your recipes which are computer generated have you cooked and tested? So that's a question that we are trying to address now, and the proof, of course, is in the pudding. But I believe that the future is not too far when we might have a restaurant which is serving you AI-generated recipes or a cloud-based service which will give you personalized nutritional recommendations based on your pref preferences and choices. And we are, of course, these, uh, building these algorithms in a manner that we can generate recipes which are tuned in a particular direction, such as, can I have a recipe which is like a Brazilian or an Italian say, having the same ingredients? Can I come up with a recipe which has only 200 kilocalories, which is what I want to have for this meal? Can I have a recipe which can be made within a certain cost frame? Or can I minimize the carbon and water footprint of my recipe, which you are giving to me through your algorithm? These are all exciting dimensions towards which we are working. And I believe very soon they will be unleashed on the world and we shall be benefiting out of them. So in summary, making food computable allows us to take a data-driven approach, data-driven view of food, to come up with interesting applications after understanding the correlates of food, the cultural correlates, social, ecological, economical correlates, and the taste correlates, and allows us to build applications such as food and beverages design, culinary fingerprinting of cuisines to tell us the uniqueness of the cuisine, dietary interventions, novel recipe generations, odor and taste prediction, and importantly, sustainable food innovations. These are the directions that making food computable can drive us, and computational gastronomy makes food computable. As we are looking at a data-driven future of food, I would like to recount my own teenage. As a teenager, 
I aspired to be an astronomer and astrophysicist. This term, gastronomy, was coined by Brida Savarin roughly two centuries back in his book, The Physiology of Taste. It has taken us 200 years to reach to this place where we have created this niche of computational gastronomy to benefit out of the data-driven approach to the food. However, what Billa Savarin said way back still rings true, that the discovery of a new dish confers more happiness on humanity than the discovery of a new star. So I believe that making food computable will enable us discovering new dishes, making humanity happier and hopefully healthier.